Hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. Um, it is definitely fall. A lot of our leaves have turned brown and they're actually falling now. Got a lot of red leaves. Um, the dogwoods have primarily turned all red and now they've got the red berries on them. The poplar leaves, some of them are still yellow but most of those are brown. Um, the maples, they're starting to turn uh, some of the hardwoods. Um, and the sweet gum trees, they're turning as well. Man, look at all the leaves falling. Really cool. Fall is a great time of year. So you can tell by the beginning of this video and some of the other videos that we're doing a lot of milling. And that's primarily to come up with the posts uh, like the 6 by 6s here in order to build this timber frame. But as you're cutting those, you come up with a lot more material. So um, I've got some 2x8s, some 2x10s, some one buys in there. Um, I've got some two by two stock right here that I don't try not to throw anything away because inevitably at some point I'll need something that size and hopefully I can remember where I put it. But uh, let me show you what we've been doing today. So we got, uh, this was primarily one log, this was one log, um, and then some of that other type of material came out of that as we whittled down in order to come up with this. But I needed three 16 foot uh, six by sixes for this side right here. It's going up. Remember, this is gonna be a shed roof. Um, unless I change my mind, but I think I'm just gonna leave it a shed roof. Um, but this next section, which is going to be the wood shop, uh, it's gonna be two story. That way I can have a place that I can store some stuff because I'm lacking for places up here to store things. Um, but yeah, so I've got one, two, three 16 foot uh, to go with and then I'm going to have to come up with three more which would be the span that goes uh, in this direction to tie these two walls together. So I set the camera back a little bit so that maybe you guys can visualize this with me. But that wall over there is the far end of this new building. This wall right here will be um, the, the outside wall of the tallest portion that's going to be up actually higher because this is not only a shed roof, but the side that the sawmill is going to be in, that's going to be a shed roof as well. So there's a section in here that's 12 feet wide that's going to go up and it'll be two stories. So that's the reason that I had to have uh, 16 foot. Um, and I'm going to have to go, out, go ahead and mortise out those for those uh, for the um, bottom plate and the next 6x10 that's going to go up that's going to support the rafters, or not the rafters, but the floor joist for the upper floor. So, anyway, um, those are going to have a lot of mortises in them. This funny looking timber right here, the one that's got... Um, the tenon sticking out and then part of a mortise right here. This is actually um, goes where the floor joist will come in at the wood shop and butt in right here. Now I could be a purist, I'm not going to, and I could notch out all down through here where my floor joists are going to go in, but I decided to use a sill plate on the bottom. Um, it works just as well. It's something for your floor joist to rest on. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, get hangers as well. And just doubling up on everything. And I'll put the hangers on here and we'll screw that in. But the reason that I got this tenon is so that I can join the next one to it. I'll put a couple of pins in here. And then this one is where uh, one of the 6x6 six six posts are going to come down. I'll have to mortise the corner of the other one. But it'll set down inside here. And then I'll be able to put a pin in and we'll hold that post down right there. Now I went ahead and worked on the other end. You can see I've got this one mortised out too with a hole. Um, but as I got to looking at this, I went ahead and changed my mind because the way that this would set over here on the sill plate, I'll show you. But this right here is my six inch mark. This is where the edge of the post would be. So I dug out a three inch tenon to be able to sit that post down in here. But I think I'm gonna change my mind, I'll show you. This is representing my big uh, floor joist beam over there, which this is my uh, sill plate right here. This is what the stuff is riding on. So the floor joist will actually sit down on top of this. 
but I'm also going to have the hangers on this right here as well and I've still got plenty of column for this thing to sit on but the way I had had or was thinking about designing that was this would come all the way out to the edge right here this wouldn't be here and then that's the reason I put the mortise right here so the post would sit up top but then when I got to thinking about you know the the fascia or the aesthetic look from the front of the building it probably the post wouldn't look good sitting up here so what I'm going to do is put the post all the way down on the column I'm going to dig a mortise out of the post and we'll uh, take that other one I'll cut some of it off we'll make a tenon sticking out here we can slide the two together then when we get ready to put this together like I said it's still sitting on this column and then the floor joist will start here because this will actually be the front wall so I think that this will look a whole lot better than the way I had that which you know just a little bit of work I have to waste on that mortise over there but I've still got plenty left it's not too late to do it but uh, I think that that's going to look a whole lot better but um, anyway then I've got another one of these going up on the second floor so I got to remember to make the mortise on this outside post for the second one to go in up there as well. So this is the other 6x10 that's going to join that one that we were just talking about right there. This is going to go on the back side. Um, so I've got a little bit of work to do on this one. Got two 16 foot 6x6's here. Got one laying there. Got a couple of 12 footers laying right here that we have cut. I've also got uh, one 10 footer and I think there's two now there's three twelves more of uh, the six by sixes. I got a two by eight laying here. I've got several, I think six or seven two by sixes there, and some one by material that we came out of as we go through and we cut those six by six posts. Now these logs aren't too big. They're probably about this big around, and I've got some much larger ones down there because I've got to have I think ten two by tens to go um, on the floor for the uh, floor joists and uh, so I've got a couple of logs down there I think I'll be able to get those out of that but um, you know building this way certainly takes much longer um, to do um, because I probably could have already had these two walls framed up tied together and possibly working you know for the rafters um, to try to put the metal on but um, this is a lot of fun and of course I swore I would never do another timber frame uh, because of all the extra work but um, it is fun to do and I thought you know everything up else up here is built heavy duty so since I'm gonna go ahead and build this barn I might as well do it the same way um, a barn a wood shop a sawmill uh, and then that part back is only going to be the barn park the tractor in right the other thing that I'm thinking about doing is possibly somewhere over here. I might need to pick up just a little bit and kind of move some things, but I'm thinking about building a very small shelter um, and building a uh, fire reflector uh, fairly close to that. I've got a big pile of wood that was stacked near that little tiny house. That hopefully uh, it will be gone soon, um, but that pile of wood right there will last me quite a while but I'll be able to use that this winter, come down here, build a fire, um, and be able to run over here in this little shelter and kind of get warm, you know, and bring my lunch down here. That way I don't have to run back and forth up there to the cabin. But uh, I think that that might be a good area for it because actually the next columns that I'm gonna pour with concrete will be the other side of the wood shop, which would be the beginning, basically right here, the beginning of uh, the sawmill area but I'm doing this in sections to kind of uh, break it up a little bit that way I didn't have columns sticking up everywhere and I could actually drive through here and set beams up and things like that so I just have to remember <laughs> to have the mortises on the side that I'm going to continue to build so I have to be able to lock everything together right um, but yeah I think that's what I'm going to do is build something temporary down here and just put uh, maybe it's some camouflage tarp over it and uh, I think it will be good enough that it will last all winter and kind of hold some heat you know like well, if I build a fire and then like I said put a fire reflector uh, in the front of that but um, 
yeah everything is coming together on this building it's still you know like I say it's very slow choosing to do something this way but you only do it once right and um, it's easier to go ahead and do it now um, you know as we build it and that way it's all built the same because I could have you know did one section one way and another section another way yeah it's a lot of fun it's just it, it's slow it's a slow process so there'll be several videos on this building down here because this is going to take a while okay uh the choice of wood that i have around here because i know that i'll probably get these questions uh since i'm working on this timber frame and i've already got um several that are similar to what i'm fixing to say but primarily i'm building all of this out of poplar um even this right here i was surprised because when i took that foot ad and I went through and I hewed this, uh, the outer portion uh, layer of the bark off, or of the timber off. Um, it actually burned different than it normally does. It normally will burn dark and black. Um, but this actually almost looks like pine uh, when I've got that oil on there. So I really, really like the way that this turned out. Now. I do have a lot of yellow pine. I have a lot of white pine too, but I really like the white pine. Um, I haven't so far tried to cut any of those down. I've had some blow down in a snowstorm uh, or in bad weather, and um, there's a few that I've got left that I need to go and get, but I've tried to leave all of those alone. The, what I really have in abundance here is poplar. Now, you gotta remember, and if you're new to this channel, I've said this before, but this area that the cabin is built, uh, the whole area, actually out up, up here at the outpost, used to be uh, rolling, it used to be green grass on rolling hills because back when uh, we bought this property in the late 60s, um, it was farmed. They had cattle running in here. So all of this has happened since about 1970, all these trees. So we've got about 50 years worth of growth in here. And this is what happens when you leave things unattended. You get all this growth like you see behind me right here um, and everything all the way down to the, well, even that bottom field down there, it didn't have a single tree in it uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it was about the time that I had left when I got divorced and sold that other cabin. And a lot of that has grown up uh, since I left and come back. But um, yeah, this is the result of uh, farmland being unattended for several years. This is what happens. And all of this is just, you know, seed that blows through the wind or birds, you know, that come up here and, and mess. And, and then they got seeds, you know, um, in their waist and they take uh, root and they grow. Um, and you know everything has its job right? I'll probably be doing quite a bit of work on the inside of the cabin too because still I have those kitchen cabinets that I've got to finish. I have those fine folks that sent me that whole box of deer horns uh, for handles so I've got to get that put together. We've also got baseboard that needs to go around the whole cabin so when I start milling up some of this pine I'll probably be able to come out with some more baseboards. Now I do have a stack of slab wood down there that probably still has some good ones left in it and I've got a few around the back here but um, that's something else that's going to have to be done for the cabin. I've still got some shelving to build in up above um, the utility area in there where the washer dryer and the refrigerator is going to go as well as um, I need to put plugs um, and wall switches on all of the outlets that I've got through here and actually get it hooked up to the power panel in there and also get busy on the bathroom in there. Um, I need to build a vanity, I need to go ahead and get a bathtub and I'll probably wait till next spring to do the plumbing because the way I've got it rigged up now I drain things from the kitchen sink into a five gallon bucket so I only have to dump that about every three days as I wash dishes and things like that. But anyway guys, I just thought I would give you a little bit of an update on what's going on up here at the cabin. We appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out with us to check in to see what's going on behind the scenes up here. We hope that each and every one of you have a fantastic day. You all take care. 
and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.